Once again from sunny Kissimmee, Florida, it's time for Braves baseball. Our second spring training telecast here at the Walt Disney World features the Braves and the Detroit Tigers. Ah, opening day, just a few short days away. The Braves and Tigers tune up on a beautiful afternoon. Hi again, friends. Chip and Joe, welcome back to our Braves spring training coverage. And an interesting storyline for the Atlanta Ball Club. You know, the Braves are looking for a fifth starter because Luis Gohara is hurt. A week ago, they picked up Anibal Sanchez, a former Tiger. And, Joe, he looks to impress in a start today. Well, we're going to get a look at him just like the Braves staff and executives are going to look at Anibal Sanchez because he's trying to pitch for a spot on this roster and he doesn't have much time to do it. Everybody knows that he knows how to pitch. 34 years old, 12 years in the big leagues with the Marlins and with these Tigers, and 90 big league wins under his belt. Well, the Braves certainly know about him. He set a Tiger team record with 17 strikeouts about three years ago in a, on a cold night in Detroit. So they know he's got good stuff. It's just a matter of him showing it and being able to start the season healthy. And you figure he's amped up to face his former club, the Detroit Tigers. All signs point to a beautiful day for baseball. Lineups and first pitch, Braves and Tigers from Champion Stadium in Orlando coming your way next. Landmark Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram. Picture perfect Chamber of Commerce type day here in Kissimmee, Florida. 64 degrees, slight breeze blowing out toward left center field here at Champion Stadium. Chip and Joe with you for our second spring telecast. Here's a look at the Atlanta defensive lineup. Might see this one on opening day. Preston Tucker in left. He's done an excellent job. For Atlanta, Ender in CRT and center. Nick Markakis, of course, is the Braves' right fielder. Around the horn, Freddie Freeman at first. Ozzie Albies, Dansby Swanson, Rio Ruiz at third with Johan Camargo banged up. Kurt Suzuki's behind the plate. And we'll get our first look at Anibal Sanchez, Joe, in Braves colors. But as you said, not our first look at this longtime veteran right-hander. No, and you've probably heard this before as you see Ron Garden hiring his staff for the Tigers once more here in uh, Kissimmee. There's his lineup. One similar similar to the one we saw a couple of days ago. Leonis Martin 
Alexis Amarista, Victor Martinez, the veteran, McCann, Goodrum, Hicks, Jones, Reyes, and Pinheiro rounded out. Uh, for Anibal Sanchez, you tell me where you've heard this before. He's a veteran and he knows how to pitch. Does he have the fastball he used to have? No. He's going to top out about 88, 89, maybe 90 today. But he knows how to move the ball around. It's a matter of him staying out of the middle of the strike zone. He has an excellent changeup that has some good tailing action to it. A good slider. Once in a while he'll throw a curveball, but it's all about location for him if he's going to be successful and have a chance to make this team. He's going to have to deal with Victor Martinez in the middle of this Tigers Toyota starting lineup, but he doesn't have to deal with Miguel Cabrera, so that's obviously an advantage yeah. for him. And he should know these guys pretty well, which should also help him fare well, you'd think. Yeah, he had a contract with the Tigers that had a an option for next for this season, and the Tigers declined it. The Twins signed him. And it was a non-guaranteed contract. And then when the Twins signed Lance Lynn, they had to find a place for him on the roster. And they re released Sanchez, and that's why the Braves were able to sign him and check him out as a prospect for the fifth starter role. So we'll see how it goes for Anibal today. We'll also see how it goes for Leonis Martin, who's leading off playing center for the Tigers. And pitch number one right there for a called strike. Saw Martin play here a couple of nights ago, and he doubled and scored a first inning run for Detroit. And smokes one right up the middle where Dansby Swanson awaits. And as we said two nights ago, what used to be a hit now with all the advanced defensive metrics. Dansby right place, right time for an easy out. One away. That will be a key for Anibal to get a lot of ground balls today. He's not going to strike out a ton of guys you wouldn't expect. But if he can get the Tigers to put the ball in play and hit it at people, it'll be a very successful day. Alexi Amarista is the hitter, and Sanchez gets ahead with a strike. Mark Wegner, by the way, has the plate this afternoon. Jerry Lane, Laz Diaz, and Manny Gonzalez will rotate around the bases for the Braves and Tigers. Sanchez with a 90 mile an hour fastball ahead 0 2. On a ball pitch last. Um, I think it was Sunday and against Houston who had all of their big boys in the lineup and he did a real nice job four innings he gave up six hits and two runs but Brian Snitker said it could have been even better than that uh, were it not for a couple of misplays behind him but he was very impressed with what he saw and you pointed out a couple of days ago the Braves really aren't going to need a fifth starter until really the second week of the season right. First, the 0-2 pitch for Alexi Amarista. And he just missed the corner. Pretty good pitch. One ball, two strikes. Talk with Brian Snitker about Luis Gohara, who everyone had penciled in as one of the brave starters coming into spring training. He's going to slap toward left as Tucker retreats, and Preston's got plenty of room. There's the second out. Brian said before the game that Gohara is working off the mound now. He is making pitches, but he has yet to do the pitcher's fielding practice where you plant and throw and test out the ankle. And until he does that, the Braves are going to obviously proceed very cautiously with him. And quite frankly, Joe, as much time as he's missed, Gohara is going to pretty much have to have spring training all over again to get his arm strength and then stretched out again. Well, it's not about just getting in shape. It's dropping a few pounds, too. That They feel like that's what led to a couple of the injuries here in the spring a fly out of play so with Gohara sideline that's why the Braves are going to look at Scott Casimir at Anibal Sanchez and perhaps others to see who pitches best for that fifth assignment that they'll need a couple of weeks into the season that's rifled out of play foul by Victor Martinez and the count's still 0 2 Sanchez throwing a lot of strikes that's also encouraging two old friends going at it here in uh, it's amazing how at his age Victor Martinez still has such a quick bat. An amazing career over 2000 hits. And started off as a catcher. And 39 years young. Ought to be 39 again huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Got a lot of amens <laughs> here in the booth on that one. Yes we did. Still one ball two strikes. 
Shift on for Martinez. Three Braves defenders right side of the infield. He smokes one the other way. That's how you get 2,000 hits. He beats the shift, dumps it to left, and Victor Martinez avoid with a two-out knock. So Anibal will go to the stretch for the first time. He'll face James McCann, the Tiger catcher. As you said, these two ought to know each other pretty well. McCann caught a lot of Sanchez's starts last year. He started 17 games with the Tigers, won three, lost seven last season. And him off stride, a little pop. Who wants this? It'll be Ender Inciarte in front of Nick Marquegas. A two-out single is left stranded for the Tigers. No score. The Braves coming up. First inning now Atlanta takes a look at left-hander Daniel Norris an interesting character and a guy that Detroit clubs really counting on for a rebound year this year yeah and a healthy one uh, we, we talk about players in spring training so often with that are key components to any ball club and he's one for the Tigers that they just they want him to be out there for a full season you know 32 to 35 starts be healthy because he's got great stuff And there's the Braves lineup. What might be the opening night lineup against the Phillies. Presented, of course, by Toyota. And a quick strike for Ender and Ciart. I think it's safe to say everybody is looking forward to leaving camp. The proverbial light at the end of the tunnel is here. With, as you said, opening day, near days away. And a base hit for Ender against a left-hander, Norris. That's the, one of the many great things about Ender and Ciarte. Lefty, righty, doesn't matter. And he hung in well. And he singles to start the game. He's had a good spring. He's hitting 273 coming into this at bat. Improves on that. Stays in there. Doesn't flinch. No stride. And that's how you also, like Victor Martinez, in Ender's case, you pick up 201 hits in one season. So Norris immediately to the stretch. Ozzie Albies the batter. Ozzie's hit safely in four of his last five games. Has a couple of homers. Both of those came in the same game. One lefty, one righty. Kevin Seitzer said something today uh, to me about Ozzie that I didn't take into consideration. And I was talking about what good hands he has in his swing. And I said, and he's also solid and strong he said Joe I think he might be pound for pound the strongest player in the major leagues really yeah that's what I said <laughs> and he goes absolutely no balls one strike well Braves media guide says Ozzy Albies is 5'8 165 that sound about right I think that's light I think he's more in the 180 to 185 range He had a terrific 
57 game run for the Braves last year batting 286 six homers scored 34 runs in those 57 games made just three errors in those 57 games for the Braves. And remember too he hasn't played second base all his life. He was moved to, to second base from shortstop to make room for Swanson. And he's made that move look seamless. He's played real well there. Andrews got a pretty good lead at first with nobody out. Braves have been a running club this spring. And Norris missed up and away. Ball two. Tie strike, even count. Good change up there. Well, Norris has the pitches, he has the pedigree. He was originally in the Toronto Blue Jays system. And he's a player that current Braves general manager Alex Anthopoulos knows very well. As you know, Alex has historically never been afraid to pull the trigger and acquire a big name. When the Toronto Blue Jays went out and acquired David Price. Well, Norris was one of the players that was sent to Detroit in return. Full count. Ender's running. And the pitch popped up. Shallow right. And Reyes is there. He's got it. And Albies pops out for the first out. And this is the kind of move you can make when you're on the cusp of getting into the postseason or feel like not just getting into the postseason but have a chance to go all the way and win it you, you have to be willing to give up a prospect like Norris for a player like David Price at the time and Alex certainly not shy about it here's Freddie runner at first one out for the Braves first baseman that went down and they almost hit him one ball no strikes can't think of a Brave that is more excited and ready to get going than Freddie Freeman, who, despite being limited to 117 games because of the broken wrist, hit 28 homers last season for Atlanta. He's one of the guys ready to go to Atlanta. You know, you've heard of Hell Week in the military. For the Marines, well, that's kind of what the players are talking about right now with getting these last few games over with. Runner goes, pitch high, McCann's throw, high and late. So the Braves continue their running ways. Ender with a stolen base against a left-handed pitcher. That gives Atlanta 25 steals here in Grapefruit League action. That yeah, was a good catch and release by McCann. Throw was up a little bit, but still right on the above the bag. This is all on Ender getting a good jump. So an RBI chance for Freddie here with a 2-0 count. You know, I like this. Uh, I know it's spring training, and you're working on stuff like your jumps. But in many cases, you wouldn't want Ender to steal in front of Freeman because it might take away the hole on the right side. But because the shift's on, you know, the second baseman way over in the hole, that hole's gone anyway. So why not and give Freddie a chance to drive him in? Fly ball hit toward shallow left. And that ball is down. Jacoby Jones couldn't make the play. Ender around third. They're going to wave him. And he's going to score on a slide. Freddie Freeman with a bloop. Drives home the game's first one, and the Braves lead one zip. That looked like an I got it, you take it. It looked like Leonis Martin, who's an excellent center fielder, took his eye off the ball to let Jones take it, who might have called for it. And then all of a sudden, it was too far out of the reach of Jacoby Jones. 
Cost him a run. So Ender and Freddie trade places. Freeman hopes to make it home with Kurt Suzuki coming up and batting cleanup this afternoon. Again, as Joe said, this might be a pretty good indication of the Braves opening day lineup when they face the Phillies at SunTrust Park. Brian Snitker has batted either Tyler Flowers or Kurt Suzuki fourth a lot this spring. And with Ronald Acuna starting the season in the minor leagues, looks to be how Atlanta will go to work offensively for the first couple of weeks of regular season play. And when you look at the numbers that Kurt Suzuki put up individually and Tyler Flowers collectively, catching core had cleanup hitter type numbers for Atlanta last year as Suzuki skies to center where Martin puts it away for the second out. And number 22, Nick Markakis. Nice cheer for Nick Markakis who will bat for the first time today. He's had a good spring. 364 average. First pitch from Norris to Marcakis, and that gets by McCann. Freddie Freeman moves up 90 feet. Well, you know, for Nick, this isn't his first rodeo. He's been through the big league wars for a long, long time. As a veteran player, knowing you're on the club, Joe, what's the biggest challenge with less than a week to go when you're a hitter as accomplished as Nick Marcakis? It's just getting some at bats, fine tuning what you've already been working on all spring, and hope that you're not. Wasting a lot of good hits and a good swings down here before the season starts. But like you said, Nick's been around for a long time. He's been very consistent. So seeing a couple of big league pitchers, and by that I mean not guys that are on the bubble trying to make a club, see a guy like Norris, that gets you really ready for the start of the season. And the lefty lefty at bats, sure. I would assume, are mm -hmm. real important. Marcakis pulls it to the right side, and that's through the glove of Hicks. And Freddie Freeman scores. It's 2 0 Atlanta. So the Detroit D, or lack thereof, here in the first innings cost Norris a couple of runs. It's sharply, but the ball came up on him a little bit and couldn't knock it down. Hicks doesn't figure to get a lot of playing time at first base with a guy named Cabrera on their team. So Preston Tucker gets a first inning at bat. We saw Preston for the first time two nights ago and was very impressive. And you said something about uh, maybe the opening night lineup. Tucker is certainly in play for that. And two days ago we saw him start against Liriano left hander He's starting against Norris today left hander he's getting a good long look for perhaps not a platoon situation maybe be out there a lot and Brian Snicker talked about some of the attributes that Preston Tucker brings your club is he a gold glove defender no we're saying no but he's opened eyes this spring with his bat and for a club Joe that doesn't on paper have a lot of power that is a very important commodity to have. He's solid too. six feet 210. Played at the University of Florida. Last year was in the minor leagues all year and AAA all year with Houston. They didn't call him up. But he had a big year 24 homers 96 RBIs. 2015 with Houston with the big league club 13 homers and 33 RBIs and 300 at bats. He's been here before. One two pitch and tipped and caught by McCann and Norris picks up his first strikeout. The Braves cash in a couple of defensive miscues and score twice in our first inning.
trainings here and on MLB.tv. Watch select spring training games live on your favorite supported devices. Blackout and other restrictions apply for regular season games. Visit MLB.tv for all the details. Braves 2, Tigers nothing after one inning of play. Nico Goodrum, John Hicks, and Jacoby Jones, the first three Tigers coming up. Goodrum's had a nice spring, hitting over 300. And he's a Georgia boy out of Fayetteville. A very good spring. Played third base here a couple of nights ago, playing shortstop today. Good change. For those of you who see Anibal Sanchez pitch for the first time, and certainly pitch for the first time in a Braves uniform, you're going to watch him work both sides of the plate. You're going to see a little, a little Tiot move on a little turn there, like he just did. He's going to throw everything at you. He pulled the string beautifully, didn't he? That was the slowest of the three pitches. He's got two change-ups. One that you might call a straight change, and then he's got one that's kind of a floater, and that was 67 miles an hour and a beauty. It was said about him a couple of years ago when the Tigers had Verlander and Scherzer and Sanchez on their staff. So that Verlander and Scherzer will blow you away. Sanchez will confuse you. Little pop down the right field line is going to drop for John Hicks. And he'll rumble into second base with a blue double with one out. Now batting in 21, Jacoby Jones. He just dumped that ball into no man's land for Detroit, and he's at second base for Jacoby Jones. Well, it's kind of refreshing to watch a guy like Sanchez pitch in this era of Major League Baseball, don't you think? So many guys throw so hard that, in my opinion, control is lost at the expense of lighting up the radar gun. This guy's not going to impress you by throwing 95 or more. No, and, and again, I'll go back to what I said when he started the first inning. There are going to be days where he's not right, where his command is not as good as he wants it to be. And because he's not throwing 95, it's going to be a short day for him. He's got to hit spots. He's got to change speeds, as he did on Goodrum, which was a beautiful sequence. Well, he had his A stuff, you recall, against the Braves when he was pitching with Detroit. April 26, 2013, he struck out 17 Atlanta hitters, which was a new Detroit Tiger franchise record for a nine-inning game, a record that was held by Mickey Lolich. And he only pitched eight innings. He's, uh, I think he threw 122 pitches, so they took him out of the game. The Tigers had a comfortable lead with 17 punch outs. How many pitches? 120? 122, I believe. Well, we know 51 of them were strikes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The Braves lineup that day, tell you how time flies. Andleton Simmons was the Braves leadoff hitter at Comerica Park against Detroit. First the 2-2 pitch. Another blue. And a shallow right. This one will drop in front of Nick Marcakis. And Hicks will stop at third base. Couple of bloopers for the Tigers. Put runners at the corners with one out. Simmons Simmons led off Dan Ugla Justin Upton Freddie Freeman Chris Johnson Evan Gaddis BJ Upton Reed Johnson and Juan Francisco served as the Braves designated hitter that day or that night I should say and the amazing stat that Flip Feinberg looked up for us before the game Freddie Freeman was 0 for 4 with four strikeouts against Sanchez which I would bet money that that was the last time Freddie struck out four times in a game well you and I did that game and it was a nasty cold mm -hmm. raw upper Midwest night that you could tell from the get-go that Sanchez had 
everything working. Certainly 17 strikeouts would confirm that for you. He was dazzling. Another well located off speed pitch. One ball, one strike, two nothing. Atlanta Tigers threatening in the second. Headed for the burn beyond the third base dugout. See, there's another change in his delivery slide step, so kind of a quick pitch in a way to Reyes, who was late on the pitch. Another little pop. Tucker in left makes the grab runners going to tag and go halfway and there's out number two Reyes a rule five pick in fact he was the first rule five choice in the draft this past offseason out of the Arizona system he's getting a long look this spring for a Tiger Club Joe that's in rebuild mode very athletic good looking kid. Nice play by. Preston Tucker too to get rid of that and hit the cutoff man to prevent the runner at first base from advancing. Daniel Pinero, the final hope for Detroit in the second. Runner at first goes. The pitch is low. And a stolen base, stolen base for Jacoby Jones. Tigers have hit a ton of home runs this spring, 32 of them. And that's the third highest mark in the Grapefruit League. Ooh, a cross up, maybe. Of course, working with Kurt Suzuki for the first time. Hey, what was cool, though, was in the clubhouse before the game, they have not worked together. And Kurt was pretending to set up behind home plate, you know, like behind a towel. Mm -hmm. And Annabelle was talking about setting up where he wanted him with various pitches, and they were really trying to have a cram course working with each other. Yeah, I was going to ask you, how long do you think it takes a catcher, even one as veteran status as Kurt Suzuki, to have an idea of what Sanchez is trying to do on the mound? He, I'm sure he's faced him a lot, mm -hmm. but catching him. Not just putting signals down, but catching him a whole different story. And he just walked Pinero to load the bases. Dennis Martin will back with three aboard and two outs. Martin. Had a base to work with, but the nine hole hitter in the lineup with two outs really didn't give him much to hit. And he's going to work from the windup. Always good to get ahead. He does to Martin. Strike one. Martin rolled out to short his first time up. Martin out of Cuba. The big stops Texas, Seattle, and finished with the Cubs. He's going to line out to right. Hard hit ball. Detroit strands three in inning number two. It's 2 0 Atlanta.
to you by Landmark Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram. Yellowwood. SunTrust. Confidence starts here. And Sherwin-Williams. Dansby Swanson's going to lead off the second for the Braves. Atlanta got two first inning runs off Daniel Norris. Dansby Swanson, Rio Ruiz, and then Anibal Sanchez are coming up. That's up and in for Swanson. One ball, no strikes. Couple of homers, four RBIs for Dansby, hitting 222 here at Disney. And you touched on a little swing tweak of Dansby Swanson from last season to this. Yeah, if you weren't with us a couple of nights ago, he's trying to hold his hands a little more in front of him so that he doesn't push them back behind his right shoulder and create a long swing. And he's trying to move them up towards his right shoulder from that starting position. Shorten the swing a little bit. And as Kevin Seitzer said, maybe try not to think about pulling quite so much. Chopper hit towards short. Big hop. Strong throw and it pulled Hicks off the bag. So Goodrum unleashed a laser to first, but it was off target. And Dansby's aboard to start the inning. Now that is number 14, Rio Ruiz. Another Detroit error. They made three here the other night. Yeah, not the kind of thing that Ron Gardenhire wants to see at this stage of spring training. Regardless of who the players are on the field, he expects expects things to be a little tighter than they have been in these two games. Rio Ruiz with a couple of homers this spring, 10 RBIs, batting 232. Looks like he might get strong consideration to open the year at third base for the Braves with Johan Camargo out with that back issue. Yeah, Camargo, he's walking around like he lost his dog. He just so down and out about having to start the season on the DL. But they're being very cautious with that oblique and back issue. Good for another chance at short. High throw to second. And another high throw to first and no chance to get Rio. Amarista almost threw that into the camera well. So Dansby's forced to check it with one out. Let's see what Sanchez can do. Yeah, I'm really surprised Amarista even tried that. I think Anibal asked McCann for a fastball right down the middle. I mean, they're old buddies. <laughs> Probably. It's been a while since he's had to hit. Remember, he was he started his actually started his career with the Boston Red Sox. Went to Miami in that big trade that included Henry Ramirez. So he had to hit for a few years while with the Marlins, but that's been a while. Oh and two. And out of ball is struck out. Now batting number 11, Ender in CRT. So two outs, Ender in CRT. The battery singled, stole a base, and scored in the first. You mentioned the season for Ender last year. Made the All Star team, won his second straight Gold Glove, 201 hits for the Braves. Hit 304 as well. I'm with you. I love the fact the Braves are running this spring. I hope it carries over into regular season action as well. 
And another point that Brian Snitker made to you and I um, before the ball game. Not just the running aspect, but how important the defensive metrics have suddenly stepped up to force teams or suggest to teams that they become a little more athletic, and especially in the outfield. Better defense, a little more speed, a little more running. There's certainly still a reliance on home runs with a record set last year, but only if you have the personnel for that. If you don't, there are other ways to win a ball game. Two balls at a strike. And it fought that off. Two and two. Two outs, Rio will get a head start. I like Norris a lot. I love his arm action. It's kind of a whip it out there, you know? He's thin, tall and thin. Quick arm action. And he missed with ball four. Two on, two out. That is his first walk. He's had base runners all over the place because of some shaky Tiger defense in the early going. Well, Norris, an interesting story out of Johnson City, Tennessee. Free spirit, you know the story about him living in his Volkswagen van and he'd drive all over the country and all of that. More importantly, he's a thyroid cancer survivor. <coughs> so to see him make it all the way back from that is a great story in and of itself. The story he'd really like to write is help the Tigers rebuild, accelerate now that Justin Verlander is no longer at the top of the rotation. They've got the makings uh, at the top of the rotation of some pretty good arms with Jordan Zimmerman, who's going to start opening day, uh, Fulmer, Norris. That's a pretty good one, two, three to start. But like the Braves, We'll go back a couple of years for Atlanta. You're looking at a similar situation for Detroit where they're just trying to find pieces to fill in until their some of their younger players are ready to step in. Special play and the upper deck still no balls, two strikes. A little late again. Fouled away, still one and two. into right center field and Leonis Martin takes over. Reyes was there as well and that's the Atlanta inning.
April in the ATL when the best of Atlanta sports are all in one place. It's Hawks, Braves, and Atlanta United coming soon to Fox Sports South and Fox Sports Southeast. April in the ATL is presented by Advance Auto Parts. Picture perfect Friday afternoon at Disney. Yes, yeah, a lot better than it was two nights ago. That was chilly. Mm -hmm. Not a cloud in the sky today. Jill Breeze blowing out toward the batting cages in left center. And Anibal Sanchez ready for his third inning of work. Point Snicker mentioned before the game. Four innings, 65 pitches or thereabouts is what he'd like to see out of Sanchez. He's halfway to that four inning mark so far today. How about that first pitch? Change up 76 miles an hour. It makes me wonder when, you know, when he was released by the Twins, I thought maybe there was a physical problem, you know, that he just wasn't able to get the ball to the plate. He wasn't throwing hard enough, something like that. But when you think about the Twins and how they're going for it, and they signed Lance Lynn, so they needed to make room for him on the 40-man roster, and they released Sanchez rather than release, you know, or designate for assignment one of their prospects, and he was the odd man out. Makes you wonder if they hadn't signed Lynn, if the Twins would have kept him as maybe their fifth starter. Because there's no signs of any physical problems today. No. Good command. Reasonable pitch count. Getting ahead of hitters. The three hits he's given up, two of them were bloops. So he's had these hitters off stride a lot for the Tigers. Is that one to Victor Martinez missed inside one ball one strike. Well he's from a baseball hotbed. In Venezuela, America, home of former Brave Martin Prado and tons of other major league players. He says yes to the Suzuki sign, and Victor Martinez pops this one into shallow center. Ember is there, and he's got it. See, that's a case where a guy who knows how to pitch, as he and Victor exchange a hello, is that you don't have to throw 95 to pitch inside. That ball tailed. It started inside, but Victor committed early, so he was trying to fight it off a little bit. It was 89 miles an hour, but it was moving. You can pitch at that velocity. You just got to know where to put it. A guy by the name of Greg Maddox did it pretty well, didn't he? Yes, he did. James McCann popped out to center his first time, so he takes another look at Sanchez and looks at ball one. <laughs> Muscled up and threw that one at 91. So we've seen 91, maybe a 92 mile an hour fastball, and then we had that 67 mile an hour changeup earlier. That's pretty broad. Spectrum of pitch velocities. And that squib right off the end of the bat. Sanchez dropped it. Catcher running. Flips to first in time. And that retires the side. Nice recovery, too. Three up, three down. First one of those for Anibal today. Smoke.
Two nothing. Who better to lead things off than Freddie Freeman? Joe, he's today's SunTrust Confidence Starts Here feature. Last season, his National League ranks top 10 in all these categories, despite the fact that he missed so many games with that broken wrist. Home run every 15 and a half times up. Great year, as we said the other night. It was going to be an MVP quality season had he been able to stay on the field. And the timing of it, there's, well, first, there's no good time for a great player to get hurt. But the timing of the injury was really awful for Freddie last year. This one's out of play foul. Braves are about to go to Anaheim and face the Angels. And he's from that part of the world. And everybody was looking forward to seeing Mike Trout and Freddie Freeman face mm -hmm. each other in opposing uniforms. And then Mike Trout got hurt. So we, yeah. we never see Mike Trout, first of all. And then the Angels never see Freddie Freeman. Neither one got to play in that series out of Anaheim. He was looking forward to going out there because the last time the Braves played in Anaheim, he wore them out. It was a return home. He had a lot of family and friends there. Had a great series. Uh oh. Launch more. Right center field. Pretty well hit. That ball is off the scoreboard. Lionel's hit himself in the face. <laughs> a towering home run for Freddie Freeman again off the left handed pitcher, and it's 3 0. He's ready. Yep. Second homer of the spring. Fastball, belt high out over the plate. No doubter. Yeah, you don't miss those too often, do you? Nope. He doesn't. So Freeman's got a couple of hits, a couple of RBIs, a couple of runs, and the lead's now three for Kurt Suzuki. Talked about the Braves catching tandem of Suzuki and Flowers last year. That duo combined for 30 homers and 98 RBIs. And the playing time was split almost perfectly right down the middle. And Suzuki playing in 81 games last year. And I would guess they'll, that'll be the same game plan for the Braves in 2018. After Kurt came off a career high 19 homer season in those 81 games. Yeah, but didn't he have some stretch like from after the All Star break or really even from the 1st of August where he was hitting, he was up there with uh, all the big home run guys like Judge and Stanton in terms of home runs per at bat? It was crazy. From July 1st to the end of the season, Suzuki hit a homer every 10.87 at bats. There you go. Sixth best in the major leagues. The only players that had homers with more frequency than Suzuki over that stretch you might remember Giancarlo Stanton, J.D. Martinez, Reese Hoskins, Joey Gallo, and Aaron Judge. Hmm. I didn't know Gallo was in there. I didn't either. The second walk issued by Norris. Mark is the batter, and he takes a shot at left and is a little late. Strike one. Speaking of Judge and Stanton, maybe we'll see one of, maybe both of those guys here tomorrow. The Braves and Yankees will face off here at Champion Stadium. We'll have the game for you at 1 o'clock Eastern Time here on Fox. And Julio Tehran is the Braves' scheduled starter. Can't wait to see him when you look at his spring numbers, Joe. It's been outstanding. He said um, reapplication of himself to conditioning, getting better this offseason, and work on his slider. He really needed to sharpen his slider, and it feels like that's really paid off for him here in spring training. Working back right back to the mound. Morris gets one and goes two. So Norris makes a good pitch when he needed one, two for the price of one. Marquez rolls out. And here's Preston Tucker, who struck out his first time. Joe mentioned Preston Tucker out of Tampa, Florida, and the University of Florida.
out of Plant High School. Over in Tampa. Florida's always had a very, very good baseball program. Preston Tucker, when he left the Gators, set school records for hits, at bats, doubles, and RBIs, and the second most home runs in Florida baseball history. That's a lot. Well, his track record, not only does he have power and hit homers, but he strikes out a lot. Comes with the territory for him. But I sure liked what I saw two nights ago with a couple of swings, especially against Francisco Liriano. One ball, two strikes. Well, he has an interesting path to the Major League roster. Obviously, Ronald Acuna is going to be here at some point. Can this guy be a Matt Adams type hitter? For Atlanta once Ronald Acuna takes over as an everyday outfielder for the Atlanta club. That's a good question and a good call. That may be something that's already in the back of Brian Snitker's mind as he watches Tucker. And he checked his swing and takes ball four. Second walk of the inning, third walk of the game for Norris. Good at bat, laid off some borderline pitches. Dansby reached on a shortstop's throwing air back in the Braves seconds. His second look at Norris today. You mentioned the mechanical adjustments that Dansby is trying to implement this spring. Is he at the point where he ought to feel comfortable with those changes at this point? I would think so. He's had enough at bats. To work on those things. This is a this is an excellent uh, situation for him to implement that right here. Even though there's two outs and a runner at first, it, he's got a hole over there on the right side. Why not take the opportunity in your head, pretend that it's you know a leadoff walk, trying to move a guy first to third, and work on trying to hit that hole. To get the. Last ball from Norris, one ball, two strikes. Hope to have several Braves join us on the microphone later on during our telecast today. Dansby Swanson's on that list, so hopefully he'll be able to join us. We want to stay tuned for that. Norris has had a lot of deep counts already in the game. He's in his third inning. And he's about to throw his 66th pitch. Popped up. Foul ground and bobbled. <laughs> and a perfect bounce to Alexi Amaristo, who is in the right place at the right time. <laughs> Straight A's for Amaristo as he bails out his big first baseman, John Hicks. <laughs>
Goodrum will lead off for the Tigers. John Hicks and Jacoby Jones are set to follow. Anibal Sanchez, three innings of three hit shutout ball so far. Started the last inning off against Amarista with a good changeup for a called strike. What's he going to do this inning? Knee high fastball over the outside corner. That's a good place. Mm -hmm. Strike one. <laughs> same pitch, same result. Boy, he is sharp. And a veteran move there. Just took him a little bit wider off the plate to see if Goodrum would offer. One ball, two strikes for the former Minnesota Twins prospect, Nico Goodrum. They took him in the second round of the draft back in 2010. So he too, another young player. Ron Gardenhire probably had a look at him when he was in the Minnesota organization. Brought him over to Detroit to see if he can open some eyes and give them some more organizational depth, perhaps, as there's the change. And Goodrum didn't get it. Struck him out twice. During the course of the season, sometimes you hear me talk about a changeup that goes right to the back point of the plate. And that's where that one was. It split the plate. He wasn't trying to hit a corner. He was just all about change of speed and making it look like a, a fastball and very effective. Hicks hits on a mile high toward left. Tucker on the run to the track and to the wall. Can't get it. It's off the top of the fence. And John Hicks gallops into second with his second double and he just missed hitting it out of the park. Can't believe that didn't go out. Now that breaking ball there. And just out of the reach of Tucker. But it stayed in the yard. Fourth Tiger hit. Hicks has two of them. Jacoby Jones has one himself. He's also stolen a base. Jones getting the start in left for the Tigers. Pickoff play, and they got it. Ozzie snuck in behind Hicks and applied the tag perfectly. This is very interesting because this is what the Braves were working on this morning when I got to the ballpark. It was pickoff plays in particular, in particular at second base. Now Sanchez wasn't involved in that because he was inside getting ready for his start. But what they'd been working on, they tried and it worked. Nice job by Albies to kind of block him off the bag, too. So Sanchez with a great pickoff play at second gets the second out of the inning. And now he's way ahead of Jones, 0 and 2. Really is a game of inches. Hicks almost hit it out of the park, and then he's out on a bang bang play at second on a pickoff play. One and two. He's got 91 or 92 when he wants it. Oh, the string, and Jones couldn't catch up. What an outing. Four scoreless innings for Anibal Sanchez with three strikeouts. He scattered four hits, and he's coming up second with the Braves bat in the home fourth.
on Fox Sports. Chip and Joe with you from Walt Disney World and Champion Stadium. Our great crew downstairs Mike Miller, our director, Brian Woodrum, our producer, Gretchen Caney, our AD, Arbuckle Jenkins on stats, and Flip Feinberg is with us as well. Our second spring telecast back at it tomorrow afternoon. Then our final spring tune up will take place at Sun Trust Park on Monday night when the Braves host the Yankees. One ball, two strikes. As the spring roster stands Atlanta has 36 players still in camp Got it down to 25 for opening day against the Phillies really didn't get that he chased a Norris pitch up and in and is struck out one away now that is number 64 so Norris with Three strikeouts brings up Sanchez, who was his first strikeout victim. He did that trying to bunt. And obviously going to go another inning. Do we have a pitch count for Anibal through four? Fifty-two. Oh, outstanding. So that's real efficient for Sanchez, who takes a strike. It's nothing and one. Puts it in play and chops it to short. Good room with a good throw that time. Two outs. And back to the top of the goal under NCRT. The other night when we had Alex Anthopoulos on, we were asking him about the, I don't want to say shift to, but the added importance of metrics and analytics for the Atlanta Braves. He talked about the total collective organizational buy-in by the Braves and Brian Snitker was very quick to point out that Ender Inciarte was among those who were very very encouraged by and interested in those improvements and the point was how, how do you tell a guy that's won two straight gold gloves hey you can do better yeah and that you could improve on your positioning mm -hmm. but Ender has as has Nick Markakis Two balls, no strikes. In this era of launch angles and balls flying out of the ballpark and home runs being set at a record pace. Boy, run prevention is at a premium in a phase step. For an outfielder, can save you a hit or a run. You'd be foolish not to take the advice. And Ender wisely has. Norris has a one, two, three inning, his first of the game. And we are off to the fifth.
thrown 72 pitches in this game. Only one of them, however, has allowed the Tigers to score three runs. The only two mistakes he made today, one on the ball it was hit off the wall by Hicks, and this hanging off speed pitch just out of the reach of Tucker, hit by McCann, hit hard by McCann that was up in the zone. So aside from those two, I mean, even with the three runs, I'm sorely impressed. I thought he did a great job. Maybe got a little tired there that inning. 50 strikes among his 72 pitches, Joe. Five innings, four strikeouts, only one walk. Not bad for a guy the Braves signed a week ago today. Ground ball toward the left side by Ozzie. Goodwin loads up. He gets strong arm. Nico gets his man. Albies retired to start the fifth as Norris tries to get deeper into the game despite a high pitch count. He's got his first out of the inning. He hasn't solved Freddie Freeman, however. Freeman's doubled and homered. One ball, no strikes. among many current major league pitchers who employs that rather modified windup just bare minimum movement step back and turn it loose something Mike Fulton Evich has employed for the Braves mm -hmm. we won't see Mike's work this spring but we will see him in the early days of regular season play perhaps against the Phillies Good for game two isn't it I think that would be it and Mike's had a good spring. Three balls and a strike. And Freddie takes the walk. So he's reached base all three times he's come to the plate. And Kurt Suzuki will be the hitter. Four walks for Norris. A couple of nights ago, Liriano walked four or five, didn't he? Yeah, Liriano walked five, gave up four hits in his five innings. Tigers committed three errors in that game. They've made two today, but they're tied 3-3. Three, three. Zuki pops it up. Long run Amarista. Handles that one without an assist from one of his Tiger infield mates. He ranges into shallow right to take care of Kurt. And that's the second out of the inning. Freddie Freeman's day is over. Sean Kazmar pinch running for him. father would have no chance with the Braves with a Kazmir and a Kazmar on the roster. It would ultimately be Kazbah. <laughs> Pretty good chance. One ball, no strikes. Sharply hit, but Marista is there, and Norris as the game tied through five. 3-3 three, three our score. Back for the sixth in a moment.
Tonight, today was the work of Anibal Sanchez, signed by the Braves a week ago, and Joe, five innings of seven hit three run ball. Yeah, all three runs and three of the four, uh, three of the seven hits came in that last inning of work, but Anibal, I would guess you had to be very pleased with your outing today. You look sharp. Yeah, yeah, I figured today, uh, especially like, uh, you know, it was like with, uh, with Chuck about it, you know, I got like a uh, before last out and I got a like two week and a half that they didn't pitch so be the um, on track every Friday and uh, you know I, I figured today especially with the command that I showed today with my all pitch uh, my changer working really good today and I'm able to use uh, uh, my slow changer today and uh, and I figure I think when I put that pitch for a try I can do a lot in the game yeah the, both change-ups were beautiful I love the real slow change up that was awesome Kind, yeah. of, kind of reminds me of when you pitched against the Braves. I like you wearing a Braves uniform better than <laughs> that Tiger uniform when you struck out 17 guys. Yeah, yeah. That, you know, it's. Uh, uh, I remember that that game that uh, the day that I that I signed with this team. Uh, but you know, uh, back then, uh, I think the day I remember before that that game, uh, a lot of hard time the break gave to me, especially when I play when I play with the uh, uh, Miami or Marlins. On a ball, how do you feel physically? You feel good? I figure. I figure. I'd, uh, uh, I feel healthy. Um, you know, like uh, I put everything together this off season, working a, uh, a home. Uh, try to put like you know the effort, the more effort I can to to be able every five days, and that's what I you know that's what I'm working right now. You know, put a, I got the, uh, this opportunity right now to uh, to start in the two games in a. Uh, in the spring training, so you know they show the, the what I have. What have the Braves said to you about your chances? What have they told you your role would be if you were uh, able to pitch well enough to impress Alex Anthopoulos and Brian Snitker? Yeah, right now, you know, uh, probably they're going to talk uh, with me either today or tomorrow. I don't know exactly what's uh, what's going on right now, but um, you know, I'm I'm blessed to be with a uniform, especially with the braid, and, uh, and uh, you know, I'm able to pitch. Especially also against my ex team. Yeah, that was kind of fun, I'm sure. And I bet you had some fun with Victor and with James McCann. Yeah, yeah. I got like a very good friends over there. I spent a lot of time there. Uh, Victor is uh, one of the, you know, the best guys over there. He's fun. And then I know it's, uh, you know, something funny coming during the game. And, you know, and he's, he's good. He's a, and beside that, he's a great hitter. What was it like? Uh, for you and Kurt Suzuki, I saw you guys kind of talking it over before the game, trying to get together. But uh, when you've never worked with a catcher before, that's going to be kind of tough. Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit tough. But uh, at the end, you know, Suzuki is uh, the guy that I faced a lot when he was with uh, uh, Minnesota, and he know, uh, you know, a little bit of my stuff. And uh, just at the end, we just tried to put together a couple signs, uh, you know, working on signs. We we running some on base uh, sequence. Uh, in the during the game but you know I think uh, we got pretty good communication yeah when did the Braves call you after uh, Minnesota let you go <clears throat> what do you say how, how long did the <clears throat> did it take for the Braves to call you once you were let go by Minnesota I think as soon as uh, I come out of waiver he's uh, you know the guy I received a call from my agent they told me the you know Brave they want to give him the opportunity to, to be on the, in the spring training to teach the game and show what I have and uh, you know after that they're going to take some decision about it, but you know, like it's a, it's a blessing all the time when you got the opportunity to die, especially this season was rough for a lot of free agency guys. Um, and be here, you know, I feel I feel blessing for that. Well, I tell you, Anibal, you certainly didn't hurt your chances today. You, you pitched wonderfully. It was fun to watch you pitch, and uh, uh, we wish you nothing but the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice job, Anibal. Congratulations. Thank Appreciate you. it. Good luck. Thank we'll you. Hope to Everything. hope for good news in the next day or so for you. Yeah, sure. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Anibal Sanchez, five innings of seven hit ball for the Braves today. And these are the kinds of problems I would assume Joey, a pitching coach, a manager, and a general manager want to have when you have guys pitch under pressure like Sanchez did and come through to make whatever decisions you have to make more difficult. Well, I don't care how how long you've been pitching, how, long, how many years you've got in the big leagues, when you know the spotlight's on you and you gotta you gotta show it. He did today. That was, that's part of it too. AJ Minter on the mound is the first man out of the shoot for the Braves. And no restrictions for AJ Minter, Brian Snitker said before the game. He is good to go for regular season duty. Not bad work for the Braves last year when he got called up.
15 innings, 26 strikeouts. 15 innings, 26 strikeouts, and two walks. That's the best one, that last number. The two walks. Start of the year at single A for the Braves with the Fire Frogs. Then Rome, Mississippi, Gwinnett, and all the way to the big leagues. And as, again, Brian was saying before the game, you look at the numbers for the Braves' bullpen last year and the struggles they had at times. Brian said, hey, you know what? A lot of our bullpen was on rehab all the year, or they uh -huh. were coming back in what was their rehab year. Minter's certainly one of those guys. So Atlanta really hoping for big things out of this powerful young left-hander, A.J. Minter. And he just painted the inside corner and froze Jacoby Jones. Three up, three down for A.J. Minter in the sixth. Jones can't believe it, and the Braves are coming up, still tied. Available for opening day Thursday, March 29th when the Phillies are in town. It's a day at the ballpark you don't want to miss. Get your seats for opening day today at Braves.com slash tickets. This is Shane Green out of Claremont, Florida. Boy, he did a good job for the Tigers last year. He became their closer in late July after Francisco Rodriguez faltered. And maybe Shane Green, Joe, will be the answer to the perpetual question that the Tigers have had, and that is who can close games for them? He did an excellent job in 2017. In fact, he came to spring training and said the closer's job is mine to lose. Four and three, nine saves, and an excellent 2.66 ERA. Top 10 in the American League in appearances. A high strike for Preston Tucker, who was walked in and struck out. Well, that is a short arm action from Green. And it comes out of his right ear. Broken bat, roller to first. That'll take care of Tucker. Green cleans it up with the bag, one out. Charlie Culberson grabs a bat. He'll hit for Dansby Swanson. In this 3-3 game in the sixth.
Shane Green began his career with the New York Yankees. And after the 2014 season, he was traded to the Tigers, part of a three team deal that sent Robbie Ray and a minor leaguer to Arizona and Didi Gregorius to the Bronx. Green started in the starting rotation, got off to an excellent start in 2015, then dropped six of his next seven decisions and been kind of a, a bullpen guy since. And now, as we said, become an excellent closer. Culver's into straightaway center. That ball's carrying, but Martin's going to catch it. And Charlie's retired for out number two. Got another guest on the line. Hello, Kurt. Kurt hey, Suzuki. guys. What's going on? Well, tell us uh, your thoughts on the uh, last two guys we've seen on our air. First of all, Anibal Sanchez today, and then uh, the gentleman who pitched two nights ago, Brandon McCarthy. Uh, veterans, um, you know, they, they have an idea of what they're going to do out there. You know, I've caught Mac um, before, you know, early on in our careers. We were paired up in Oakland, so we kind of had a feel of what each other likes to do. And Anibal, um, you know, just facing him a bunch of times and kind of have an idea of what he likes to do as well. So um, we, we were kind of on the same page right right off the bat, me and uh, Anibal, and, uh, you know, just kind of went from there. Stick around. we got more for you. Hang on. You got it. For sticking around for the seventh inning and uh, Kurt you mentioned with Brandon McCarthy a moment ago that you've had an opportunity to work with him before Joe caught something in the locker room before the game today you were working with Anibal Sanchez not necessarily on what finger to put down but positioning which is kind of interesting Looked like your setup yeah it was it was more um, you know with with runners on base you know what he likes me to do in, in certain counts and certain situations and stuff like that. That's that's all the, the, the growing process like the pitch selection and all that all that stuff kind of just comes with the flow of the game and um, you know understanding what he likes to do what his strengths and weaknesses are but um, if I can present him with the target that he's comfortable with that he likes um, helps me to get him in the zone more um, you know that, that's kind of what we talked about. Well we kind of figure that McCarthy's a lock uh, supposed to be the starter for day three. Not the case with Anibal. He had to come in here and pretty much show what he could do. And I thought he was very impressive today and had an awesome changeup. And not just one changeup, but two. Yeah, he, he mixes it up. He's, it, you know, the funny thing was I told him, I said, I don't have, I don't know if I have enough fingers for you. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, just facing him, you know, he, I know he's got, you know, tons of different pitches. And, uh, you know, his first game in Houston that, that, um, you know, I caught him. You know, he doesn't shake. You know, he trusts you and he goes along with you. He shook a couple times today when he was going against Victor just because he knows Victor. But, um, 
you know, for the most part, we're on the same page. We just try to move it around, and he's, he's all about execution. If he feels like he can execute any one of his pitches at any time, he feels like it's a good pitch, and that's the type of confidence that you want to have in your pitcher. Kurt, last year was your first, obviously, with the Braves organization, and I'm sure you knew all about the highly touted pitching prospects that were coming through the system. We're a year deeper now into this rebuild with these young pitchers, and I'm sure you've seen a lot of them this spring. Can you talk about the growth that you've seen, not just from the minor league guys, but guys in rotation now? Fulton Evich, Tehran, for example, have you seen that? Yeah, I mean, you see Fulty. Um, obviously, his numbers this spring are pretty, um, pretty un unbelievable. Um, you know, it, it's not just about the numbers, too. Just the way he's in control of everything and control of his body, and that comes with, uh, like you said, growth, mat maturity, uh, you know, he understanding situations and not getting overhyped in certain spots. And, and that's just the process that it takes to grow. And, um, you know, you, you, I've had the chance to catch guys like Soroka and Allard. And, and you just watch their composure. Besides the talent that sticks out at you, um, they, they seem like they got it between the ears. And, and that's also important as well. well. It's getting to be pretty exciting times around here with these guys kind of percolating to the big league level. And they're not that far away. Yeah, they're they're close, man. And you know, anytime you can get t towards that double A, you know, level, maybe a little bit of a triple A, you know, you're right on the cusp. And um, you know, we've seen it many times before. Guys getting called up right away. And you know, when you need somebody gets hurt or or you need a, a spot to fill or something like that, and these guys can come up and, and give them an opportunity to show what they got. So it's it's an exciting time here. You know, I'm excited to see uh, what these guys do what, if and when they get that chance up in the show. Let's go back to you. Talk about you. Uh, some more because a bullet by Pinero into left field and the Tigers have two aboard with nobody out. Arguably your best year last year, even splitting time with uh, Tyler Flowers. So as a veteran player who had tremendous success last year, do you come to camp tweaking anything or you just try to keep everything status quo? Uh, I try to keep everything status quo. Um, you know, obviously during the season, there's going to be adjustments. There's going to be things that need to be made. It's, it's just baseball. But for the most part, uh, it's, it's all between the head. I mean, between the ears. You know, it's all in the head. Uh, just staying mentally prepared. Um, you know, preparing yourself to be to be able to go out there on an everyday basis, whether you're starting or you're not. You know, there's always a chance that you might get in, into that game. So uh, always keeping yourself ready is, is always important. So. Uh, me and Flo are, are super excited about this year and, and excited to see, um, you know, how things play out and, you know, excited about our team. Everybody in the major leagues wants to play and wants to play a lot. And you and Tyler split the catching duties extremely well last year. You're an excellent teammate. And among your catching brethren, you two have a very unique and great friendship. Would you agree? Uh, I definitely agree. You know, you don't, I mean, it's hard for me to say because, you know, I haven't been on every other team, but it, it seems like it would it would it would be um, not as how me and Flo are you know everywhere you go in, in the big leagues we just have that uh, connection where you know there, there's no ego you know we understand the situation obviously if there's one player um, playing better than the other they're going to play and you know I'm I'm just um, out there just just trying to help the team and I think Flo can say the same thing and and if you kind of watch us throughout the season throughout spring training here. Uh, we're always, always trying to help each other out where, you know, he has obviously some some strengths that, you know, uh, I don't have and I have some things that, um, you know, I can I can teach him as well. So we're always trying to help each other out, trying to pick each other's brain, and I, I think that makes for a good combo. Are there times during a game where, uh, let's say you're catching, you're in the ball game, where maybe Tyler saw something either watching a video or went back up and checked something where he can come back and say, Hey, I noticed this on so and so. You might be able to try something different on him next time. Oh, 100 percent. And and even with with uh, my catching as well. You know, there's I I mean I there's a ton of games last year that you know me and Flo would be in a dugout whether it's I'm catching or he's catching and one of us would come down and and they'll be like I'll, I'll say to him Hey, why don't you why don't you try this? You know, this might help and uh, you might like this. And um, you know he'll go out and say okay and and vice versa where if I'm catching. You know, he'll come up and offer some advice to me and what, what he sees might help. And, and we just constantly, uh, every single game, you know, I think last year we, we were doing that. And, um, you know, that just makes for fun, too. You know, it's, it's fun, and we're, we're all trying to win here, so it's, it's been great. Sure. But I'm sure you're really, really bummed out that you won't get to catch the knuckleball this year. Yeah, I mean, 
<laughs> me, me and Floyd talking about that. I asked him, has he still got those knuckleball gloves? He goes, I don't know where they are. I said, me neither. <laughs> yeah. I said, let's hope we don't have to pull them out. Yeah. What happened? What, what, tell me about the power. Where'd that come from? I know you, I, mean, I joke with you all the time about the axe handle bat. Was that something that uh, you feel has led to the power surge that you enjoyed last year? You know, I, I think a little bit. You know, I mean, the comfort, obviously, having the right model, right, you know, feel in your hands is, is, is huge. But at the same time, I think, you know, working with sights and knots last year uh, in the batting cage, uh, working about being being freer, being looser, uh, tension free, and just letting your hands work a lot. Um, you know, that that really, I think that's when I really took off is, is when I when I felt that and that that little adjustment with a little tweak we worked in the cage. I think I took about 300 swings in a game in the batting cage, just hitting every inning with Nachi, and we just worked on it, worked on it to becomes comfortable and and just kind of took off and. And just it's being around honestly being around uh, somebody like Freddie and watching Freddie hit watching his approach um, to every single at bat that he does he never gives away any single at bat he's ready from pitch one so that's right you know th there's things you know I mean you know, you know even being in the game for 10 plus years you know there's always things you can learn and and that's what I love about baseball just being being in the game being around special players like Freddie and being around great coaches like Seitz and Nachi uh, you can always learn things well I think what you just said too I want to go back to one of the things I appreciate about you, Kurt, is uh, how you handle the fastball. Nobody can throw a fastball by you, but it's because you stay back so well and just let your hands work. And I've said this repeatedly that uh, I learned from good players that your hands are a lot quicker than you think they are if you let them work, if you don't let everything else get in the way. And that's what, to me, is so pretty about your swing is that uh, you don't have any wasted motion and you just take your hands to the ball. Yeah, that's 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 kind of. I mean, I, I try to keep my swing as simple as possible. I know, guys, everybody has their own uh, approach and everybody has their own setup and positioning and things like that. I try to keep mine simple, less movement, similar to Freddie. You know what he does, less movement, um, and allows your hands to just go straight to the ball. And like you said, you know, if you're on the fastball, it seems like you can lay off that nasty slider or curveball. Mm -hmm. But when you're kind of in between. Um, thinking about pitches then you start chasing balls and you start being late for the heater but if you're right. on on the fastball for me it seems like you know you can stay back on the off speed and that's when you're going to hit those those off speed pitches for pulled home runs is when you're on the fastball and and then you can recognize the off speed easier well from july 1st to the end of last year we told the audience this i'm not sure if you're aware of it you had the sixth highest home run rate in the major leagues did you know that Oh man. Stanton, Martinez, Reese Hoskins, Joey Gallo, and Aaron Judge were the only guys that homered more frequently than you did on a per at bat basis from July 1st to the end of the season. That's well, pretty good company. That's, that's, that's hot. Man. That's pretty big company right there. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what that, that's, a, that's pretty big company. I think. I think I stack up pretty well against those guys, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> uh -huh. Yes, sir. James McCann rips one to the wall in right center field, and two more Tigers are going to score. I thought he here from that. Yep, six straight Tiger hits. Well, Kurt, we just hope more of the same. We hope you have a great year. We hope you have a healthy year, which means then those numbers will will stay high. But uh, have a great 2018. We're looking for great improvement from the Atlanta Braves because we just feel a big buzz around this camp like everybody else. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me. Good to see you guys again. You Always too. a pleasure, Kurt. Thanks so All much. Right. Thank you, guys. All right, Kurt Suzuki. As the Tigers have touched up Matt Whistler for five runs on six hits so far here in the top of the seventh inning. There you see the defensive changes for the Braves. As Chuck Hernandez out for a quick visit with Mr. Whistler. Big day for McCann. That's five RBIs for him. They've come in his last two at bats. Everybody can have a bad outing in spring training. Unfortunately for Matt Whistler, his first three outings were very good. Over the course of seven innings, he had not given up a run. But his last two outings coming in, three innings, five hits, four runs, three and a third innings, four hits and a run. And then today has not recorded an out yet. So it's rough timing for him. One more defensive change for the Braves. Ezekiel Carrera has taken over and left for Preston Tucker. The Tigers have eight runs on 13 hits today. 
Sadik with a nice stop. On a ball in the dirt, one ball, two strikes. Spots still open up in the Braves bullpen, and Brian Snitker has made it fairly clear that those spots are for long relievers, or the potential for long relievers. And Matt Whistler was in line for one of those. This is not going to help his cause today. Still hasn't retired a batter. And that's going to be the end of the line for him. And Lucas Sims yesterday got knocked around pretty hard in his outing. And both guys were considered candidates for that role. But not good outings for either one of them the last two days. So after 23 pitches, Matt Whistler will depart as the Tigers continue here in the seventh inning. Airlines, Landmark Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram, and by Xfinity. Xfinity delivers the fastest internet with the best in-home Wi-Fi experience. Call, click, or visit an Xfinity store today. 8-3, Detroit has the lead. Wes Parsons takes over here in the seventh inning. Parsons relieves Matt Whistler, who... Gave up six hits and five runs so far. Double play ball. There's one. And Culberson with a bad throw. Pulls Kazmar off the bag at first base. It's safe to say the last time, last couple of games, Braves and Tigers have played, it has not been a defensive showcase. No. But a nice job here by Parsons to get the ground ball. Kazmar pulled off the bag so far he couldn't even reach the runner. So this is Cam Gibson. It's a pretty big name in Detroit Tiger history. Gibson. Kirk now one Gibson. of the. Gibson. now one of the broadcasters, and this is 
Kirk Gibson's son. Is it really? I had a feeling. He was a fifth round pick in the Detroit draft. Left hand hitter, 6'2, 200 pounds, and can really run. A big surprise there. Mm -hmm. When his dad first broke in, and I was still playing and playing some first base in those days, you could not only hear Kirk coming, you could feel the ground shake. Really? He ran, he was fast, ran fast, he ran hard. So what a thrill for the Gibson family. To Cam Gibson following in his dad's footsteps and wearing the old English D of the Detroit Tigers in a big league spring game. And it's slashed out of play for a full count. Good year last year for Parsons. Almost a strikeout for inning pitched. Going hard. Full count with two on, one out. Five runs across for the Tigers. And Gibson sprays one down the left field line. That's going to drop in for a hit. And two more Tiger runs are going to score, and they make it 10 to 3. Cam Gibson with a shot the other way down the left field line picks up a couple of RBIs. You know what? I don't, I'm not sure. We'd have to go back and maybe see a couple of pitches ago, but it's almost like he changed his stance a little bit. The longer that count went and the way Parsons was pitching him away that last pitch that he hit the left field kind of closed his stance up some. Make sure he had the outer third covered earlier in the at bat he had an open stance. Pretty sharp. This is Troy Montgomery. The tenth Tiger to hit in the seventh inning. third base coaches put themselves in harm's way that close to home plate. Pete Clark is only about 45 feet away on that line drive that whistled by him. And as the pitch comes to the plate he looks over his right shoulder to try to get a bead on the baseball in case it comes his way again. One ball, two strikes, all Detroit. And a swing and a miss. Montgomery didn't get it. Parsons gets a strikeout, two away. And Daniel Pinero is going to hit again. He's been on base three times. Two singles, two runs, and a walk.
Late swing and foul to the screen. Even count. One ball, one strike. It's a heavy sinker. Parsons is throwing 93. That one missed a little low, but it is really moving down. Let's see what he does with a 2 1 pitch. And it's 2 and 2. Parsons pitched in 26 games at Mississippi. Last year went three and three there. Four games at Gwinnett with a high ERA. One would think he'd be ticketed for AAA. In 2018. And a full count. Just joining us, Anibal Sanchez started the game for the Braves today. Pitched real well. Gave up three runs on the last pitch he threw. A bases clearing double by James McCann. That tied the game three apiece. Freddie Freeman had a good day at the plate. Double, homer. And has scored a couple of runs. And an Adam ball to third off the bat of Pinheiro. Ends the top of the seventh. Time to stretch. A big inning for Detroit. They lead by seven. It's red. Brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. SunTrust. Confidence starts here. And by Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Home seventh coming up. It's 10-3. And a name fraught with danger takes the mound for the Tigers. It's relief pitcher Buck Farmer, whose given name is George Rooney Farmer. Now that is number 18. So far, so good for him this spring. He's not allowed a run in nine innings. Bunch of strikeouts, a couple of walks. Big, strong right-hander. Born in Conyers, Georgia, is the 27-year-old righty. Out of Georgia Tech. For Atlanta to start the seventh inning. And Lane takes a strike. It's two and one. 
Both sides bringing some arms out of the bullpen that are bringing it. Green and Farmer for the Tigers. Lane batting 234 this spring. Strikeout's been a big problem for him here in Central Florida. This one's lifted towards center. And Lane Adams will be Farmer's first out. So the National League East, Washington certainly didn't stand pat. They've, they've added a couple of players to kind of enhance their first place standing. Will it be enough to hold off the, the Mets, who have added some players as well, but the much improved Phillies too? I, I think the East is going to be much more competitive this year than last, with the exception of the Marlins, who are obviously starting over again in South Florida. If the Mets pitch like they're capable of pitching, I think they have a chance to give anybody mm -hmm. a lot of trouble. The big question in Washington is, number one, can they get out of the first round of the playoffs if they make it? They haven't done that yet. And will this be the final go round for Bryce Harper? He is a free agent, part of that gigantic free agent class that'll be in the offing after the 2018 season. And they have a new manager, and the guy's never managed in the big leagues, and Dave Martinez. And if I remember correctly, this may surprise you, Don Mattingly is the longest tenured manager in the National League East. Wow. Well, how about a couple of guys who got fired who made the playoffs last year managers the head scratcher for me was Dusty Baker Dusty Baker I thought Good that grief. last year might have been and he's had some great seasons as a big league manager I thought last year might have been his finest hour losing Eaton losing Bryce Harper for a while and yes the East was down this year but they were one game away from knocking off the defending world champions in the playoffs and had Max Scherzer coming out of the bullpen in the final game of that series in the playoffs and the Cubs got to Scherzer and that was that. Mm -hmm. Joe Girardi. I think he's got to the postseason. Yep. That wasn't good enough. Damn. No such luck. Ender pops out. And we'll see that new Yankee manager, Aaron Boone, who has kind of become a manager the old fashioned way. He's come out of the broadcast booth and puts yeah. on the pinstripes. Right. I mean, and a, just so everybody knows, I'm not taking any phone calls. Okay. Well, Boone had a funny line the other day after uh, he took the job and Giancarlo Stanton turned down the potential deals to San Francisco and St. Louis, which was his contractual right. Brian Cashman gave Aaron Boone a phone call and said, hey, I think I got a chance at Stanton. And Boone put the phone down and said, gee, pretty good first day on the job. Oh, we get John Carlos Stanton to join Judge and Sanchez and those guys. Yeah, it's a formidable lineup for sure. We'll see the Yankees not only here in the spring, but during the regular season as well. The Braves will be in New York at New Yankee Stadium over the 4th of July. As well as Santana rolls one sharply to first. And the farmer. Gets the Braves one, two, and three. Tigers have retired eight straight Atlanta hitters, and we're off to inning number eight. So you took the little.
And for the top of the eighth inning, all Tigers after a seven-run seventh inning, we're pleased to be joined by two-time Gold Glove Award-winning outfielder for the Braves, Ender Inciarte, who last year, Joe, had another magnificent season. You know, Ender, when I'm looking at these numbers, uh, as cool as a Gold Glove is, to reach 200 hits like you did, if you had to pick one or the other, it'd be kind of hard, wouldn't it? Yeah, I'm always going to pick the two of those. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's great to do it. It's, uh, I felt good last year. The whole year I was happier with the way I was consistent the whole year. And uh, I mean, uh, uh, getting 200 hits is something big for me, and I hope I can do it again. And of course, uh, you guys know how much pride I take when I'm playing defense, and I'm going to try my best to keep getting those awards. Yeah, do you have a bigger mantle at your home now for all those gold gloves you're starting to pile up? It's kind of nice, huh? Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's really nice. I mean, uh, being there in, in, in New York and uh, uh, getting the recognition for defense and everything like that, I mean, I, I went with my entire family, and it's big, and it's, uh, I was really happy to do it, and hopefully I get to do it every year. <laughs> We're hearing more and more, Ender, about uh, defensive analytics and, and about how you are very receptive, even as a two-time Gold Glove winner, to anything that might help you with, with positioning or whatever it might be. Talk about that a little bit. You know, uh, I think whatever advice they're trying to give me, it's uh, to help me. Uh, I know they're trying to help me. The, everybody here is on the same page. We're trying to win games. and. Uh, I know even last year I could be in better position to get to some balls and uh, we have really smart people that are trying to help us be in a better position to get to to a lot of balls that we couldn't catch last year. So I take all the information they can give me to get better and hopefully I'm going to be able to to help my, the pitchers and to help the team to, to, to win more games. Seems like there's a different feeling around the club this year. Uh, there's been some rebuilding going on here for an extended period of time. You've been a part of that, obviously. What's the mood in the clubhouse this year compared to 2017 in spring training? It's very exciting. It's very positive. Everybody's on the same page. We, to be honest, we are all ready to, to start the, uh, the season. We want to start playing uh, in Santos Park and... Uh, I know everybody is really happy with the staff we have, we, with how we've been playing, and hopefully we're going to be able to show it in the season. But it's a total, uh, different atmosphere, and everybody is really excited this year. <clears throat> You've become one of the fan favorites in Atlanta because of uh, your all-around play, but also because uh, you're accessible. You're not a guy that... Uh, kind of dodges autographs you, you talk to kids and things like that is is that something that was taught to you when you were coming up uh, from Venezuela about how to how to interact with the fans too yeah my dad always encouraged me to to be like that uh, to to young kids especially I I know they really appreciate that and when you get to treat them uh, when you give them a special treatment they're going to appreciate it forever and they're going to pass it along. You know, uh, I remember in winter ball one day I was I was asking for a baseball to a guy and he gave me the baseball and he told me, hey, remember to treat the kids the, the same way I'm treating you when you're older. Wow. <laughs> so, I mean, I kept that in, uh, in my mind. I try to be the best I can with the fans. Of course, sometimes you got stuff to do and you can sure. stop or whatever, but I, I try my best to to get them a, a good time. Ender, we have not seen Ronald Acuna. You got a chance to play alongside him in some of these spring training games as a gold glove winning outfielder. Give us your scouting report on Ronald Acuna. He's, uh, he's really special, man. He's something I've never seen before. I mean, the way he plays defense, he... I liked it, not, not only because I know he's a good defender, but the way he tried to get to balls to not let the runner get the next, the next base. And I told him right away, that's the way you got to do it. You got to get even those balls in the line. You got to get it and try to throw it quick to second base so that you don't let them take the next bat. And he's very accessible. He, he let me talk to him all the time. And, I mean, he's all around. He's so great. Uh, I've told uh, my friends and... Uh, from other teams like he's something I've never seen before I mean hopefully he's gonna be here soon he's gonna be able to help us win uh, a lot of championships but uh, for sure he's, he's the real thing 
Are you healthy? Feel ready to go? I feel uh, very healthy. I'm happy and can't wait to start rolling. Well, let's let's play tomorrow. Let's <laughs> let's get out of Orlando. Let's get the Phillies here and let's keep going. <laughs> yes, sir. I mean, everybody's here to move to move to Santos Park already. And as always, thanks so much and uh, appreciate your time. Good luck in 2018. And uh, how about 202 hits this year? What do you think? I think we could try more. I'm gonna try. I'm not gonna expect 200 or 201. I'm just gonna try to go uh, the best that I can every every single day. That should be my approach this year to to be the best I can every day. Well, good luck, sir. Thank you, guys. Appreciate right. it. The great Ender and CRT. Up and away to Joey Morgan. Sam Freeman looks good as the ball's coming out of his hand nicely, throwing hard. What an asset he was who didn't even start the season with the ball club, called up from Gwinnett and was in 58 games, 255 ERA. He thought that was a strike but didn't get the call. It's 3-0. Nice to have two lefties like A.J. Minter and Sam Freeman working in a big league mm -hmm. bullpen with all the left-handed thunder the Braves have to face in the National League East on a consistent basis. Oh, nice. Big arm action, big leg kick, and then change up. Beautiful. You know, it, it's such a treat when you get a... This guy's been in the big leagues you know, a couple of years with different teams. So he was no stranger to it, but when you kind of have a guy called up from AAA with no big fanfare and do what he did, my goodness, that's a, a bonus. And he backed up the off-speed pitch with another beauty and gets out of the eighth inning. Braves are coming up down seven. The 2018 Braves promotional schedule is out and with great events, ticket packs and giveaways all year long like the Ender Inciarte Gold Glove bobblehead, the Ozzy Calrissian Star Wars bobblehead. We have two Chipper Jones Hall of Fame giveaways and a whole lot more. Go to Braves.com slash promotions for a full list of events and giveaways throughout the upcoming 2018 season. Is Joe Jimenez. Not quite the numbers of Buck Farmer this spring. Rifled down the left field line by Kazmar, who gets back to the plate down the strike.
again to the left side. Jones Barry will be out number one. Waves and Yankees here in Champion Stadium tomorrow. Fun matchup on the mound. Julio Tehran with a 4 0 spring record, a sub 1 ERA, will face Luis Severino of the Yankees. Look at our first look at Julio, who, as you said, has been working on his slider. Mm -hmm. See if it's biting. Well, I guess will be his last spring training start. Just a tune up. This is Cade Civic out of LSU, and he's off stride there. One ball, one strike. We were talking to Kurt Suzuki between innings before we did the interview with him and he was talking about Savick and how he loves this guy. Six foot 235. And he's a guy the Tigers ought to know well. The Braves got him from Detroit for Eric Ibar. That was in August of 2016. Go. Yes, he did. They had a good year last year. Hit five homers, drove in 36 runs between Mississippi and Gwinnett. All of a sudden, the Braves, who you might recall a year, year and a half ago, were thought to be very thin at the catching position. They've got Flowers and Suzuki at the major league level. They've got Jackson and Savick climbing through the system. So that's turned around nicely as Ezekiel Carrera gets a chance to hit. He's got Carrera this spring. Another former Toronto Blue Jay, a man that Alex Anthopoulos knows very well. And a man that has an outside shot at the 25-man roster as an extra player. It's like Kurt, uh, it's like um, Brian Snitker said before the game today with the injury to Johan Camargo. And because they don't need a fifth starter for a while, he said it's almost like we're just going to bring all the extra men, all the extra position players to Atlanta and sort it out from there. So those jobs are still open. 0 oh, 2 pitch. And a swing and a miss. Jimenez pitched an impressive eighth inning. A couple of strikeouts, and we head to inning number nine. be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Atlanta Braves. 10-3 Tigers. We head to the ninth inning. Evan Phillips, promising young right-handed pitcher. 
is on the mound for the Bravos. 6'2", 215 pounds. You never know when you can have an opportunity to impress somebody or leave them with a lasting impression. And so these innings for guys that are brought over from the minor league camp may not be household names, but all of a sudden you have a good inning and the manager and the pitching coach remember. So the first man he'll face is Nico Goodrum. Is 0 for 3. If he did get the high fastball, it's 4 and 2. Phillips out of the University of North Carolina, Wilmington. Two balls, two strikes. If just joining us, the storyline of the day today was Anibal Sanchez, who started for Atlanta. Gave up three runs over his five innings, but had real good command, real good touch with his off speed stuff. And that one's hit a mile high, deep right center field, and that one is off the right tower. Nico Goodrum hits a solo home run out by our TV trucks. And the Tigers take an 11 to 3 lead. Well, it took him about four or five pitches, but I think he got his timing down on that 94 mile an hour gas. Hits for the Tigers today and an 11 3 lead. Uh, the highlight of today, like you said take away from today's game is going to be Anibal Sanchez and what he was able to do. He doesn't hurt from him. Healthy, feeling 100%, just needed to get in some games. The game he pitched in last Sunday was the first time he'd pitched in a long time after getting released by the Twins, so he's got some conditioning work to do. But how impressive is that, have it, not having pitch, but to have his touch pitches so effective, mm -hmm. not just the fastball. I mean, real, real good work for a Braves team that is looking for an answer to that fifth starter spot with Luis Gohara still on the shelf and making progress and making his way back. But he's got to go through, as Brian Snicker said, spring training all over again. Well, he'll be ready. Hitter for the Tigers is A.J. Simcox, number 89. Right off. Nice hitting, still two balls, two strikes. Fly ball on the right. 
And Simcox is retired. There's the first out of the ninth inning. One of the things you can do to impress someone if you want, if you're trying, and, and it's not just because um, this guy's got a good arm and throws hard, Phillips, but pitching to contact. If it becomes readily apparent if you're behind in the count all the time that you're trying to avoid contact sometimes. And the pitching coach and the manager would much rather see a guy who's throwing strikes and getting out and not behind in the count all the time. And here's Cam Gibson, son of Kirk. Two run double in that big seven run seventh for the Tigers. See that open stance again early in the count. Who it reminds me of that stance is Robin Ventura. Ooh, what a good hitter he mm -hmm. was. Kind of had that open stance with his knees bent. On one pitch. <laughs> his dad got mad at him. He said, wait a minute, you're going to take Robin Ventura's stance and not mine? <laughs> What's up with that? Well, let's see if he closes his stance now behind in the count. And he does. Mm -hmm. One, two. Interesting approach. I'm trying to guard the plate, maybe take it the other way. Don't you love to see young players make an adjustment like yeah. that? I mean, we, we talk about it a lot during regular season play when you've got a soft tossing guy. Why don't guys move up in the box? Mm -hmm. and you don't see those subtle adjustments too often. There he is fouling off pitch after pitch. Got that one covered to stay alive. Still one and two. If you're the pitcher and the catcher, you should notice that maybe there's a change there and that he's thinking more middle of the plate away. And come in. Let's see what Savick and Phillips have in mind with Cam Gibson. Is that a long at bat? Now they try in. But he's downstairs and inside. Two and two. He tried. Balls carrying to the track, and Gibson just missed a towering home run. Now batting in the ninth one, Troy Montgomery. Two outs. They tried to come in and missed, but this one tailed over the middle of the plate. They put a good charge in it, but just not quite enough. Good looking swing though. So Troy Montgomery. It's a chance to hit again. He struck out back in the Tigers seventh. And a base hit. 17 Tiger hits today. Tigers have the Phillies and Braves left on the spring schedule. Yeah, Atlanta's last game down here will be Sunday over in Lakeland, and the team will actually fly out of the Lakeland airport to come home. Michael Fulmer and Mike Fultonevich will battle in a battle of the mics for the final spring tilt. That's the one down here in Central Florida. The Braves and Yankees will get together on Monday at SunTrust Park. Tuesday the Braves will have a game against their future stars. That'll be fun. 
Wednesday I guess a workout day then Thursday we tee it up for real with the Phillies. So get a miss by Pinero. Even count. And we will see the Phillies a lot in the first month of the year. Three different series with Philadelphia in March and April. to see if where Jake Arietta slides into the rotation and he gets, he's getting a late start so I don't know what kind of pitching condition he's in to third but five and two and two and Jake Arietta pitches for the Phillies like he did for the Cubs a couple of years ago that good young Philly staff it's going to be awfully tough. Mm -hmm. You know they can hit, especially in their ballpark. So Phillies might be a dark horse team in the National League East in 2018. With their new manager, Gabe Kapler, the pitch. Again to third. Long toss across. And Evan Phillips takes care of the Tigers in the ninth, who got a solo home run from Nico Goodrum. you for our Braves spring training television schedule we will be with you tomorrow for the Braves and Yankees our friends at uh, was it Fox Sports Detroit will be broadcasting the Braves and Tigers on Sunday Rod Allen and Mario and Pemba will have the play-by-play -play. Joe and I will be with you at SunTrust Park for the first time on Monday night as we said the future stars game on Tuesday night then the Phillies on opening day on Thursday this is Lewis Coleman, side armor. Good numbers last year in his stops in the minor leagues. He's pitched in the big leagues before with the Royals and the Dodgers. Detroit signed a minor, he, Coleman I should say, signed a minor league deal with Detroit in late February. Face Xavier Avery to lead off the Atlanta Knife. Three balls with a strike. He was taking all the way. Crowd today, 6,103 on a beautiful Friday afternoon. A 
going to see a big crowd here tomorrow with all the Yankee fans mm -hmm. making their way over from Tampa. It'll be interesting to see what players come over. I know in the old days of the Yankees with George Steinbrenner, it was rare that you actually saw a representative team come over as major league players. So we'll find out when you find out tomorrow at 1 o'clock. There's Charlie Culberson. Gets another chance to swing the bat. He flied out in his first appearance back in inning number six. in for a strike. <laughs> Charlie had a good cut but fouled back. It's nothing in two. Pretty good deal for Charlie if you're going to get traded to get traded home. Born in Rome, lives in Marietta. Off the pitcher's foot, and that sounded solid. Look at a Schinberger. Under the glove. Ow. Clue Luis Rondon. I think is the hitter. Safe. So Rondon moves the runners up to second and third with wow. Adams another chance. the stance of Lane Adams it's different from last year if you were with us a couple of nights ago I was talking about how he's he went to a guy who worked with Justin Turner and others and you can almost see a similarity there to Justin Turner's stance with the Dodgers hands real low and in front of him Turner employs a big high leg kick higher than Lane but after the year Lane had last year I said a couple of nights ago I don't know why you would Toy with it. He has not had a bang up spring training after it looked like he would come to camp as pretty much a, a lock for one of the backup spots in the outfield. One ball, two strikes. Off the high heat. Oh, 
One of the things the Braves are trying to figure out is how to comprise their bench. There's talk of maybe carrying six outfielders or perhaps three catchers. Going into regular season play. Obviously for Adams, the six outfield situation would be of great benefit. Mm -hmm. Forced to full count from Lewis Coleman. And he couldn't check his swing. Adam strikes out. And that's been a big issue for him. And his lack of consistent contact. One of the advantages for Danny Santana making the club as a non roster invitee was that. He can play the infield or the outfield, and he can play just about anywhere on the infield. Did a good job for the Braves off the bench last year and was a solid pinch hitter. Tyler Nesloni is Braves' final hope in the ninth inning. Little roller out to second, and that is going to do it. The Detroit Tigers beat the Braves 11-3. Atlanta's offense mustered just four hits, but the good news is Joe Anibal Sanchez started, looked very good, and I would assume did nothing but help his chances to crack the 25-man roster. You would have to think so. Boy, he was sharp today with his off-speed stuff. He was pitching, and uh, fun to watch. Speaking of fun to watch, look forward to the Braves and Yankees here tomorrow. Look forward to joining you at 1 o'clock Eastern Time. Julio Tehran and Luis Severino will get the pitching assignment. For Joe, I'm Chip and our great crew. We'll see you tomorrow afternoon.